This week I'd like to review the Eastern Orthodox Bible New Testament Portable Edition. This volume is 7 and 11 16th inches tall, 5 and 3 16th inches wide, and only 11 16th inches thick. To, compared with other New Testaments, here's a standard Gideon's New Testament that when I was a child the Gideons passed out in school. As you can see, the Gideon's edition is much smaller. This is a 1948 Confraternity New Testament. And again, in terms of uh, footprint, this is a larger book. But when you compare it with the original paperback, Eastern Orthodox Bible New Testament, it is much, much thinner, not quite as tall and not nearly so wide. This is the layout. It's a two column layout in a paragraph by paragraph format. Each column of text is about 38 millimeters wide and I count approximately 35 characters per line. That's counting spaces as characters and that's on a closely spaced line. Uh, I have counted as many as 38 characters. There are as many as 42 lines of text per column. Page dimensions are 180 millimeters top to bottom and 119 millimeters wide. So that's uh, 7.09 inches tall, 4.69 inches wide. The uh, typeface is uh, printed darkly, but it's somewhat thin. Let's take a look at the margins. Margin at the top from the top of a capital letter to the edge is between 12 and 15 millimeters wide. The inner margin here can be as much as 20 millimeters. The outer margin is 19 to 21 millimeters. At the bottom of the page, below the bottom of the notes, last notes line, there are 19 to 21 millimeters of margin. When I compare the font to Times New Roman, I find that the capital letters are about the same height as a seven-point Times New Roman. The lowercase letters are very close to a seven-point-five-point. The line height is actually about ten points, so you see you have quite generous distance between the two lines. Verse numbers are included in the uh, paragraph. They're fairly, fairly easy to find and they are in red ink, although they are quite small. Everywhere I've looked, the uh, text is line matched, and the words of Christ are, as you see here, in black ink, the way they should be. Rather than use uh, italic font for words that the translator supplies to smooth the translation, these are words that don't actually map to anything in the original. The uh, EOB New Testament uses red ink and square brackets to indicate those words. At the bottom of most pages you will find notes. Uh, these are text notes, um, translation notes, quotation references, uh, references to related passages. The notes are in about a six-point font and they are not tagged back to the source. So here's note one about the word logos and if you look above this one's easy to find the one because it's at the very beginning of the passage but the others might be a bit tricky and you'll have to scan for instance here's three and here's two the uh, darkness of the print does vary sometimes uh, it's noticeable here's an example on pages 268 in the left and 269 on the right and i hope the camera is showing you that this is uh, a bit darker here on the left than that on the right is. The book titles are generally at the center top of the pages. Page numbers are at the outside top. Now since these pages are not very broad, I don't consider that a design flaw. It is still easy enough to peek inside and see which book you're at. Page contents. Um, on the left-hand page, it tells you the first verse on the left, so we begin the first full verse that begins on the left is 1 Corinthians 15.30. The last verse to begin on the right-hand page is here, and it's uh, 1 Corinthians 16.20. 
There are headings. They appear alongside the text. They are in red, an italic font, about six points in height. Let's zoom in on one of them and let you take a look at that. So, a bit smaller than the text itself. Uh, regarding the paper, it is um, fairly thick. It's uh, 43 micrometers thick. I estimate the paper weighed at about 39 GSM. There's very little gloss. You don't see much sheen there. Um, it has a light yellow hue, and the show through is very light. Uh, here is a heading from the opposite page. I think you can make it out. It certainly is not disturbing. There's a bit of print showing up here between paragraphs at the end of the book of Revelation, which is here. You have an illustration on the opposing page the opposite side of the page, rather, and then a map section. There are 11 glossy maps. You can see the sheen there pretty easily. They do enter the gutter, but as far as I can tell, you don't lose much, if any, information down there in the gutter. These are Logos Bible software maps. They're on heavy paper, which we mentioned was glossy. They span 22 pages, and if I didn't say so, so already, there are 11 of them. On this map, you can see the stitching very clearly. Four lines of stitching. So you do have a sewn binding here. Almost to the end of the maps. of Christianity, early Christian communities in the Palestine area, and another illustration here with a quote from Romans 8, 31 through 34, an end sheet. Then the end paper here is uh, shiny and uh, very nicely illustrated. If you have a copy of this uh, hardback boxed uh, Lord of the Rings set, I was reminded of the uh, end sheets in it when I saw those in the Eastern Orthodox Bible New Testament. The cover is what the uh, publisher calls a manufactured leather. I translate that to mean bonded leather. It has a zippered closure, and if there's anything I would do differently with this volume is that I would not have had a zipper here. And the reason is that the zipper makes it difficult uh, for the volume to be trained to lie open. We can, if we have the zipper like this, be difficult for you to see, but if it's pushed not all the way back underneath the spine, then the volume is going to want to flop closed because there's too much tension there. If I force the slider underneath the spine as gently and carefully as I possibly can to get it out of the way, then it will uh, lie open in the middle, but as soon as you get towards the ends, it's going to want to flop closed. So I think it would have been better to not had, have the zipper. That way you could train the leather gradually, train the hinge to soften and relax, and uh, you could use the book leaving it open without having to have something on one side to, to hold it open. Now for a comparison, here's a Holman uh, verse reference jewel Bible from the 1980s. And it has a wider spine, of course. The slider seems to be about the same size. This one, because the spine is wider, you can tuck the zipper all the way under, and the Bible lies completely open. So this old uh, volume is sewn in such a way that the spine actually bends outwards as you open it but it's uh, pretty much flat. It's over sewn here, so this page will tend to lift, but uh, this one lies flat. 
I wish they had been able to do something similar with the Bible we're reviewing today. In front you have the same decorated glossy in sheets. You have a half title page, and then full title page, which has an icon of Christ. Uh, publisher is New Rome Press, Columbia, Missouri, published in 2019. It's uh, printed in China, it says. Uh, illustrations are given credit here. Ilyevsky, Pedrag Ilyevsky. Uh, this is the name of the editor. Not really sure how to pronounce it, but I would pronounce it Klinovirk or Klinovirk. And contents you have the normal 27 books of the New Testament uh, along with maps. And then another icon and the introduction to the Eastern Orthodox Bible. This introduction is 12 pages long. It's printed in about a 7.5 point font. Uh, here on the second page, page Romanet 8, it points out that the source text is the Patriarchal Text of 1904, which was revised in 1912, I believe. On the next uh, page, the editor points out that um, this translation relies largely on formal equivalency. The editor spends some time, some time uh, introducing you to, to various codices, Sinaiticus, Vaticanus, Alexandrinus, and uh, the notion of the critical text. This paragraph is somewhat interesting. He points out here that the Eastern Orthodox Bible began as a revision of the World English Bible, which is itself a revision of the American Standard Version. We find next uh, discussion of differences between the Eastern Orthodox Bible, New Testament, and other translations. For instance, these three Greek words he translates as deacon, presbyter, and overseer. After a lengthy discussion, he points out that this Bible has uh, opted to always translate proskuneo as to express adoration, and latria is always rendered to offer divine service. The introduction makes some other points about various other translation decisions. Uh, after those, we come to abbreviations and codes. These are both in the text and in the annotations at the bottom of the page. You have a number of those. He actually includes symbols for some of the source texts for the manuscripts. As well. And there's another illustration. And we're at the beginning of the Gospel according to Matthew, which itself, title page, has a very nice decoration at the top, um, kind of a dark red ink here, and a very interesting font. I find this E quite attractive and the TH ligature as well. When I reviewed the uh, paperback edition of this New Testament, I talked quite a lot about the differences between the patriarchal text and the trans uh, Textus Receptus and the majority text. So I'm not going to do that again here. But I will point out that the uh, Three Witnesses passage in 1 John chapter 5 is included. Uh, but it's in these angled brackets. And if you look at the editor's note below, you see that he makes a point of mentioning that this passage is undoubtedly an interpolation or later theological comment, seemingly of Spanish Latin origin. But since it's part of the patriarchal text, although in smaller characters, he includes it in the main text of this edition. We'll take a close-up look at the font now. As you can see, I think it's uh, an attractive font. It's uh, easy to read, easy on the eyes, very pleasant. The tracking letter to letter and word to word looks good. Nothing that's crowded in to cause you difficulty in reading. The uh, line spacing is very helpful. 
even with this small font and my aging eyes, I really have no difficulty in reading this through my magnifying lenses embedded in my eyeglasses. Now let's see if I can pull over the paperback edition so that we can do a font comparison. So I'm roughly at the same place in the text here. And so here's Pilate answered, the Jews insisted, and then, uh, however, so we're roughly at the same place. This maps to the stone here. The Jews insisted, the Jews insisted. So they're roughly the same spot. And of course the print on the right hand side is much easier to read. The paper in the paperback of course is a, has much more of a yellow tinge, much more of a creamy color. But uh, the one on the right is uh, far less portable. Let's pan out just a bit and zoom out so that you can see this perhaps a bit better. So clearly easier to read on the right than on the left. And of course you have a single column format in the paperback. I'll just take a, a moment to point out some other differences between the larger paperback edition and the newer portable edition. The paperback edition has a glued binding that's not sewn. It has no maps, at least no color maps at the back, and no ribbon markers. Uh, in it, when you come to the end of the Book of Revelation, however, you come to a series of appendices. So these you do not find in the portable edition. Appendix A on presbyters and bishops. Appendix B on Matthew 16, 18, church and apostles. Appendix C, John 1, 1 and 18, Jesus is God. D on the filioque controversy. E on the brothers of the Lord. F on the mystery of Mark's alternate endings, and it mentions uh, an article by James Snap, whom we mention in this uh, on this channel from time to time, particularly in the comments sections. G on the second Canaan controversy, and that's it. So that's uh, the material that's omitted. In the beginning, you have the introduction again. And you have an introduction to the Synaptic Gospels and Acts, which we didn't see in the portable edition. Let's see if there's an introduction. There's an introduction to the Pauline epistles, which we don't have in the portable edition. And so we don't have section introductions here that are present here. There are two ribbon markers, one red and one yellow. They're not glossy. They have a ribbed pattern to them. They are only one eighth of an inch or about three millimeters wide. They're 286 millimeters long. They're certainly plenty long enough to be useful at the corners of the book. Because they are so thin, they have a tendency, though, to crease. So if you want to keep creases out of them, that's not easy to do. Well, we'll summarize now. Um, this is, of course, uh, quite a lot more portable than the original edition, but it's much larger than a Gideon shirt pocket New Testament. Uh, I don't think this would fit in the back pocket of a pair of slacks easily, or in a um, suit coat inner pocket very well at all. It may go into the pocket of your winter coat, but it's rather large that way. It would fit probably in most purses and briefcases easily enough. I like uh, the paper quality. I like the print quality. I like the way the font uh, typeface is laid out. I think it's very attractive. The use of red uh, colors and Bibles is becoming more common these days, and this is done quite well as very attractive in sheets. If you like that sort of thing, 
Um, I do. I like uh, the titles and the margins and the width of the margin. If you did want to make notes in this, you could. The paper is relatively thick. I haven't attempted to see if ink would bleed through, um, but it does seem like there's a chance that it wouldn't. Um, so in terms of layout, uh, print quality, I think it's very good. The uh, translation itself, although I haven't scored it uh, for literalness, it strikes me as being towards the literal range of translations. Uh, the editor does point out that he does sometimes substitute proper nouns for pronouns, which would tend to give you a lower literalness score. You do occasionally have issues with print uniformity or lack thereof. Here you have a darker page on the right than on the left. I think that should be very clear even to the camera. I like the way that he indicates where he has supplied words that are not in the original text. I prefer translations that do that. I like the fact that the words of Christ are not in red. I like the fact that the uh, pronouns for deity are not capitalized. The source of the translation is uh, Byzantine, and if you like a Byzantine type New Testament, then this should be very pleasing to you. Nicely decorated t title pages for the books. So um, that's uh, my brief review of this uh, New Testament. I hope you enjoyed it and I found it useful. Um, if you did, please remember to hit the, the like button and uh, to subscribe the, to the channel if you're so inclined. Thanks very much for watching the video.